Hello and welcome to this Dr. Ross Maths video on histograms. Now to understand the purpose of histograms and why we'd want to draw one, let's look at this example here. So let's just say we had different waiting times in a queue um, and we've got the frequency here. So let's just say 10 people waited between 0 and 2 minutes and 10 people waited between 2 and 22 minutes. Now we might be tempted to draw it something like this. So we have uh, the time here and we've got 0 minutes, 2 minutes and then 22 minutes would be all the way up here. We've also got frequency as well. So we've got the frequency here, and let's say 10. And if I was to draw these as kind of like bars, we'd have 0 to 2, we've got a frequency of 10. So 0 to 2, frequency of 10. And then 2 to 22, we've got a frequency also of 10. Now, what's misleading about this diagram? Now, what's misleading is that those 10 people here are spread out over a much wider variety of waiting times. And those 10 people here are concentrated over a narrow range of waiting times. Now, therefore, to make this kind of bar chart fair, we might instead be interested in the number of people per minute, so like the concentration of people per unit value. So, if we were to do that, so the frequency per minute and then we were to do the same again on the time axis time minutes so we've got zero we got two and we've got 22 minutes here now if we've got a range of two minutes here it's zero to two that's a width of two how many people do we have per minute well there's 10 people spread out over two minutes so that means we've got five people per minute so frequency per minute we've got five people here and what about across this range here? So 2 to 22, that's a spread of 20 minutes. And we've got 10 people spread over those 20 minutes. So that's actually only half a person per minute in terms of what they have to wait. So if we have 0.5 down here, we've got a bar like this. Now this is a, a more useful graph because it's basically saying that we have more people waiting per minute in this region than we do in this region. And that basically tells us there's a higher concentration of people waiting a smaller amount of time. Now histograms are useful therefore for showing that idea of concentration. We could say the distribution of our data, the shape of our data. Another way of seeing this, if we were to split these intervals into one minute intervals, so if we had wait time and we had sort of zero to one and then one to two and then three, etc., and we had the frequency, well, we'd estimate that if we've got 10 people over zero to two, we'd have half of those people between zero and one and half of those people between one and two. And then those 10 people, we said, were split across uh, an interval of width 20. So we had half a person in two to three. We'd have half a person in three to four, etc. So this is fairer because our intervals are now of equal width and we can see the number of people per each unit width. So that hopefully gives you an idea of why histograms are useful. And what we effectively did here, when we did frequency per unit minute, we did the frequency of 10 divided by the width of that interval. And that gives us an absolutely key formula. We had the frequency density or concentration. Density is another word for kind of concentration. And we did the frequency divided by uh, the width of the interval, and that's known as the class width. So this is the absolute key formula behind histograms. So let's use that to answer a variety of questions. We want to draw a histogram for this frequency table here. So we've got a bunch of different uh, widths and different intervals here. And the number of things were of that width. So we had five things which were between zero and five centimeters, etc. Now what we'd usually do is to add an extra column to our table which is frequency density. I'm just going to use FD for short. And as we saw, our key formula here is frequency density is the frequency over the class width. So let's do that. So we've got the frequency of 5 divided by the width of the interval, which is also 5 in this particular case. So we get a frequency density of 1. Again, that's saying that we have one thing per centimeter. What about here? We've got a frequency of three divided by a width here. What's the width five and six? Well, that's just a range of one. Three divided by one is three. What about here? We've got eight 
divided by the width of this interval 4, we've got 2. So we've got two things per centimetre. And then finally, we've got 5 divided by 10, because the width between 10 and 20 is 10. 5 divided by 10 is 0.5. Now we're going to use this updated table with our frequency density column to draw a histogram. So our y-axis is now the frequency density axis. And then we're going to put our widths across here. So we need to go up to 20. So I'm going to go up in 2s, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. So these are our widths. And then our frequency densities, we have values between 0.5 and 3. So let's make this 1, that 2, and that 3. And now we can plot our histogram. So between 0 and 5 centimetres, we have a frequency density of 1. So between 0 and 5, we have a frequency density of 1. So we need to go up to the 1 and do a bar like this. And then between 5 and 6 centimetres, we have a frequency density of 3. So between 5 and 6, we've got frequency density going all the way up to 3. And then between 6 and 10, we've got frequency density of 2. So 6 and 10, we've got frequency density of 2, so going up to 2. And we've got between 10 and 20, a frequency density of 0.5. So 10 and 20 up to 0.5 there. And there we go. That's our completed histogram. And if we were to interpret this histogram, we can see that the highest concentration of things is between 5 and 6 centimetres. We've got the most number of things per centimetre in this region. And we've got less things per centimetre in this upper region of width. So higher widths above 10 centimetres. Now let's do question two. Often you get an incomplete histogram and an incomplete frequency table. And notice that they haven't give us, given us the frequency density axis. So we need to work out what the axis is. Now what you need to do is to hunt for where we have a complete set of information. So where we've got the frequency, we've got the class interval, and we've got the bar and the histogram. So can you see that we've got the 10 to 15 bar and we've got all the information associated with that 10 to 15 bar. So do you remember, we can add this frequency density column. So I'm just going to put this piece of paper here. And let's add FD again. So we've got 80 divided by 10, which is 8. We've got 20 divided by 5, because that width is 5 there, which is 4. This one we can't fill in yet, because we've got a missing frequency. And we've got 20 divided by 10, which is 2, remembering that frequency density is frequency divided by the width of each interval, the class width, we call it. So let's look at this 10 to 15 bar. 10 to 15 had a frequency density of 4, and we can see on the frequency density scale, the y-axis, that value there must be 4. So we can now fill in these values, that's 4, so each square must be 2. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. And that gives us all the information we need now in order to complete both our histogram and the frequency density table. So we can see between 0 and 10, we've got a frequency density of 8. So we need to go up to 8 on the frequency density scale. We can also see between 10 and 30, we've got a frequency density of 2. So we need to go up to 2. That's very shallow. We're going up to 2. And then finally, we can work out this frequency here. Now, if we look back at this formula here, if frequency density is equal to frequency over class width, that also means that the frequency, which is what we need to find here, is the class width times the frequency density. Now, if we do the class width, which is effectively the width of the bar, times the frequency density, which is the height of the bar. Well, what's the width times the height of a rectangle? Well, it's the area. So that gives an important fact, which is that area of a bar in a histogram is equal to the frequency it represents. So we just need to find the area of the 15 to 20 bar. So the 15 to 20, now that's a width. We don't say it's 1. We can see that's actually a width of 5 on this axis. 5 times the height, which is 10. So 5 times 10 is equal to 50. And therefore, this frequency is equal to 50. So remember, the area of the bar 
is equal to the frequency, and we know that's the width 5 times the height 10, which gave us 50. So we've done. We've completed the histogram, and at the same time, we've completed the frequency table. Now let's look at this next question, question three. We've got 120 people had a time between 0 and 10 seconds. Determine how many people had a time between 10 and 15 seconds. Now notice again, we've been given the histogram, but we're not given the frequency density scale. So we need to work out what that scale is. We're told that 120 people, that's a frequency, isn't it, had a time between 0 and 10. So that means the area of this bar, remembering that frequency is equal to area, the area of this bar is 120. So the frequency density, which is the height of the bar, is equal to the area of the bar, the frequency 120, divided by the width of the bar, which is 10, and that gives us a frequency density of 12. Now, if we know the frequency density is 12 of this bar, we know that's 12 here on the frequency density scale. So then we know that each square must be worth 4. So 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, etc. So we've got to work out how many people, either frequency, had a time between 10 and 15 seconds. So 10 and 15, basically this bar here. Now we want the frequency, how many people, and remember that frequency is the area of the bar in histogram, so we just need to find the area of this bar. Well, the area of this bar the frequency is the width of the bar, 10 to 15 is 5, that's the width of 5, times by the height of the bar, look, that's 24, and that represents 120 people. And then finally, this last question, uh, we want to estimate what fraction of books had a price between £3.50 and £6. Now what's interesting here is we're giving no frequencies at all, and we're not given the frequency density axis either. Now notice it's not actually asking the number of books with a price between those, just the fraction of books. So it doesn't matter what we set the frequency density scale to, because if you want the fraction of books that have a price between these prices, that's the same as the fraction of the area between £3.50 and £6. And the fraction of the area won't depend on what we set this frequency density axis to. So let's just do anything we like. So we just we might as well make this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So yeah, the fraction of the books, the fraction of the frequency is going to also be the fraction of the area because area is equal to frequency. So now I've set this frequency de density axis arbitrarily to anything I like. Let's find the area of each bar. Well, the area of this bar is 1 times 4, so that's 4. The area of this bar is 3 times 5, which is 15. And the area of this bar is 2 times 1, which is 2. And I find it helpful to separately write out the area of each of the bars, either on the diagram itself or separately. So we've got a record of all the areas that we found. So now we need to find the fraction of books with a price between £3.50 and £6. That's the same as saying what fraction of the area was between £3.50 and £6. So £3.50 is here. We do a line going up. And £6 is here. So we need to find the area between this £3.50 mark and the £6 mark. So, the area between £3.50 and £6, that is equal to, well, the area of this sliver of bar here, that's 0.5, because look, that's 3.5 to 4, that's a 0.5 width, times by 5, so 0.5 times 5, plus... And then we've got this bar here, which we already know has an area of 2. And that gives us an area of 4.5. Now, we need to know that as a fraction of the total area, because the total area is the total number of books. So the total area is, and then we just add these numbers together. So we've got that area there, 4, plus the area here, which is 15, plus the area here is 2. And that is an area of 21. And that means the fraction of the area, and hence the fraction of the books, will be 4.5 over 21. Now, I don't like uh, decimals and fractions, so I'm just going to double these to get 9 over 42. And that could be simplified if we divide by 3 to 3 over 14. So there we go. 3 fourteenths of the area, and hence 3 fourteenths of the frequency, i.e. the number of books, had a price between £3.50 and £6.